Do you like apples? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Saladino. Welcome back. Now, I was offline when the Tifa bikini reveal happened, so I missed all the initial excitement. When I got back home, I saw it first on Kyle's video, and in that video, he made a point about how it looked like Square Enix saw the hype over E from Stellar Blade. It was like, hey, you like apples? We got Tifa in a bikini. How do you like them apples? <laughs> so, of course, what do they do? They get all this goodwill around them. What do they do? They fuck it all up by going back and doing this. Four years after release, Square Enix censored Tifa's cowgirl outfit in Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's this weird Catch-22 situation where on the one hand, this isn't really a big deal, but on the other, the fact that it's not a big deal makes it a big deal. There's no credible reason for Square Enix to go and make this change after four years. Even this stupid-ass argument She's 15 years old. That's a pointless argument. Tifa isn't real. And this isn't, you can't even call this like lowly or whatever. Tifa is clearly post pubescent and shaped like a woman. At this point, because this is such a small, needless change that doesn't help society or women in any way, and it's one of those things where most people will still probably take a chance and buy Rebirth because there's so much else to video games than fan service, it just seems like the only reason why they're doing this is to just stick it to gamers overall. It's just a petty, punitive, spiteful thing that they're doing. I always, I talked about this before, how the critic Harold Bloom called these activists, these feminists, the school of resentment. That they were just angry at the history created by like white men, white creators. And here it's just about how these blue haired weirdos, these cancel pigs have framed everything as gamers are bad because gamers are straight and white and male. That's it. So any chance they get to stick it to gamers, like again, I've talked about this before, it doesn't matter who else is caught up in it. They don't care about the marginalized voices they so-called speak up for, the ones who are actually fans of this stuff, who are not complaining and asking for DEI and representation and, you know, defeating the male gaze. People and gamers are not asking for this. And we're in this weird place where People who work at these companies who are supposed to be providing to the customer are attacking and antagonizing the customer. The only thing I can think to when it comes to why they made this change now, despite all the excitement around Tifa's bikini, is that somebody, some blue haired asshole at Square Enix, at their ethics department, which, you know, they're not talking about it anymore, but it doesn't mean that it still doesn't exist. And why does a <laughs> gaming studio even have an ethics department if it's not related to you know don't harass your workers you know treat <laughs> everybody at the workplace with respect something like that like what does the ethics department have to do with anything it's again it's designed to attack straight white male gamers and everybody else gets hurt in the process but so the thing is with the tifa hype seems like some blue-haired asshole used that as an opportunity to go hey you know what Tifa's cleavage is showing, and she's only 15. This is going to harm young women everywhere. How? How is it harming anybody? This has been four years, and nobody's been complaining about this. This is only happening because people are mad at the fact that people are happy that Tifa looks so good in uh, that damn bikini. That she's got the, you know, she's shaped like a Coca-Cola classic. She's got the, the bazookas, right? She's got the ballistics. And they're angry at the excitement and happiness. It wasn't just men who were like going, yeah, this is great. Women too. It was immediately a woman cosplay as uh, Tifa. You know, this is just, I don't know. It's insane to me that companies can go back after four goddamn years and make a change like this. You know, it's like the assholes who went back and censored Skullgirls. You know, they shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. You know, you paid for this. You know, and then there's no repercussions. They could just go, yeah, nobody complained for four years. You liked it. You paid for it. You have an expectation when you play it. This is how it's going to be. But we could just go in. If some piece of shit at our studio decides, I don't like this. This is harming me. They could just make a change. And there's nothing you can do about it. Even those bundles of sticks at Nexus Mods blocked the mod that removed this patch. 
It literally has nothing to do with them. It doesn't hurt anybody. It's a mod that literally restores the game to what you bought and paid for, but these pieces of shit still block the mod. These things are not done to protect women. They're not done to uplift marginalized voices, like I keep saying. This is just to hurt gamers. This is to annoy them. This is to picket them. It's, again, this weird Catch-22 or this weird situational strange loop that's happening. It's frustrating as hell because these assholes, the people who are pushing for all this stuff, they're in an industry that's supposed to serve the customer. I keep saying this before, you know, your boy Zach's talked about this, you know, when the whole uh, comic book stuff happened. The whole thing was, don't just say these angry fanboys who are living in the basement. These are your customers. These are people who actually pay for this stuff. And you're denigrating them. Right? Like, the people there now, they're not there to get your feedback as a, a gamer, as a customer. You know, they saw how excited people were over Tifa in the bikini. And instead of going, wow, this is great. We need to do more of this. They go, you know what? In the uh, part one of the remake... There's some very problematic images of a 15-year-old Tifa that we need to change because this is just too much. You can see that the excitement of these fanboys is going to have them going out in the streets attacking 15-year-old girls. Like, none of that happens, but they do this shit anyway. And again, they don't take the feedback of the people giving them money. They take the feedback of this mentally ill, autistic, blue-haired weirdo who's at the company, completely unattractive, don't know what their gender is, has pronouns in the bio, and they're telling... These companies, they're telling these dev studios and these publishers that making games that appeal to their, (laughs) to their fan base, to their customer base is harming society in some way. And they get away with it. You know, it's sort of like how Spider-Man 2. So Spider-Man 2, they got rid of the police because the media complained about it in the first game. But instead of listening to the feedback of customers and players who said, stop with the MJ uh, side missions, they decided to make MJ even more prominent, make more involved uh, stealth missions, and completely break the story in the sense of what Spider-Man is supposed to be. Listening to idiots like this destroyed the studio that made for Spoken. Because instead of making a game for gamers, they made it for modern audiences, which, like I keep saying, means the audience activists keep pretending exists. Modern audience is not real. Modern audience just means we don't like the audience we actually have. Or we don't like the audience you actually have. You're taking outside uh, feedback from people who don't like this shit, who hate your fan base. And you're listening to them making games based on what they say. And what? Now you've lost all this money and you're concerned about, oh, like we had a terrible Q2 or whatever. You know, all these layoffs you hear. These layoffs in large part are is because... They're not listening to what gamers actually want in games. They're listening to people like Neil Druckmann, who's completely destroyed Sony. His whole approach to AAA games, this obnoxious, ponderous, uh, cinematic experience that all of the major first-party studios at Sony have been following. It's ruined. (laughs) It's ruined Sony. And the thing is, again... In the grand scheme of things, it's not really a big deal. You know, I knew about those pricks at EA who remastered the Mass Effect trilogy. You know, I knew that they censored Miranda's ass. You know, they had the bundle of sticks who was there sitting there remaking or remastering this game just to make it, you know, bring it up to speed for, um, you know, the new generation consoles or whatever. Right. Instead of just doing that, making it easier, streamlining some stuff, especially with the first uh, uh, part. Instead of just doing that, they have to stick their nose in. So you got this. All right. So you got this entity going. Why is the camera on her ass at this point? Yeah. You know what? That's, and these are supposedly men who made that change, but still I did videos on it. I was annoyed about it, but I still got the trilogy because I still wanted to play the games. I hated the censorship, but I don't play games just for fan service. The thing is, it's just nice that it's there. That's the thing. Like you keep saying, not all women have to look like Tifa or the Tifa unnerfed or Eve or 2B. They could look like Aerith. Aerith is absolutely gorgeous. And people are talking about Tifa because you don't see women shaped like Tifa anymore in games. But Aerith looks great too. Like someone said when talking about the Tifa censorship, if they put the t-shirt there in the first place, 
No one would have really cared or said anything. But they waited to change it after four fucking years, and they only did it because people were excited about Tifa in the new game. It just looks like they saw how much buzz and goodwill they got over Tifa in her beginning. And instead of riding that wave until the release, and you know, it's just come out today at the time of this recording, but they had to show what absolute pricks they are by censoring a four-year-old game in a scene that no one but their piece of shit activist employees had a problem with. Vara Dark did a video on this, and she mentioned how people were saying, why not just put a filter for people who are sensitive about these things? You know, sensitive about fan service. You know, they did this with uh, one of the Bayonetta games, I think the most recent one. And the thing is, the problem is, they don't want you to have the choice to do that. It wouldn't be enough to just put a filter on it, because they know nobody's going to use that filter. They know that the fan service is popular. They know that the people they supposedly speak up for don't have a problem with it. They know women like it. Like, if you're a fan of this stuff, you are a fan of this stuff. You're not whining about, oh, there are too many sexy women in it. Look, if you don't like that, then you wouldn't play it, or you would play different types of games. The thing is, like I said, they don't want you to have the choice. Instead of them just saying, let's make more games where there are fat, unattractive lesbians in it. They go, no, you need to put the fat, unattractive lesbians in popular games like Final Fantasy VII. You need to nerf what was fine 20 years ago. Now, today, since we're all gay and trans, you can't have a heterosexual, attractive, shaped woman. They know good and well, nobody's going to use that filter except maybe streamers, but no one actually playing the game for themselves. Woman, gay trans, marginalized or otherwise, is going to willingly censor their own game over some cleavage. And the fact that people will still buy and play Integrate and still buy and play Rebirth proves that gamers aren't just some porn-obsessed weirdos who want fan service in games so that they can go out into the world and harm women. (laughs) Gamers just like sexy, attractive women. It's like giving someone cake, watching people get excited over it, then taking it away because you don't like cake yourself. Woke isn't about respecting women. It's about demonizing men under the guise of respecting women. It's taking a natural appreciation of the female form and making it a bad thing because you don't agree with the body type that's being appreciated. Like I always say, if you put Lizzo in a bikini like that or in a cowgirl outfit like that, nobody would have a problem with it. But it's because it's 2B or T4 or Eve that they have a problem with it. Square Enix... I'm sure they're going to have a big hit with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I I intend to get it myself unless in the next couple of months you see that they've done stupid patches to it, right? But I guarantee you, despite the fact that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is probably going to be, you know, on the short list for Game of the Year, their ethics department is going to fuck them in the long run. There's going to be more Forspokens in their future, and personally, I won't care when you start hearing about layoffs at Square Enix.